Welcome everybody. We'd like to welcome you to the very first video from the American Maishan Breeders Association. The American Maishan Breeders Association was established in 2016 to help promote and preserve Maishan pig genetics in the United States. Today we're going to tell you a little bit about Maishan pigs, their history, and why they're so important in our preservation effort. Here we have Pink Lady. Pink Lady is a beautiful example of a Chinese Maishan pig doing exactly what Maishan pigs like to do best, which is sleep. Maishan pigs are from a region in China known as the Taihu region. It's so named because of a lake in that region. The Chinese have been domesticating pigs in that region for over 5,000 years. The Maishan may very well be one of, if not the oldest, heritage swine breed in the world. They are a medium-sized pig, growing from 350 to 400 pounds. I'd say Pink Lady here is about 400. Hey girl, how you doing? They're unique in that they are hyper-prolific. And what that means is they have very large litters. Uh, this young lady, her last litter was 20. A typical Maishan litter can be from 12 to 16 piglets by the third parity or the third time that they farrow or have babies. Maishans first came to the United States in 1989. In the late 70s, early 80s, the American pork industry was in a quandary. Pork prices were falling, efficiencies in growing uh, were not that great. And so they were looking for ways to improve the efficiency of pork production, and one of those was to make the litters larger. So after 10 years of negotiation, the United States agreed with China to bring in 99 Maishan pigs. They also brought in two other breeds, a smaller amount, that were also hyperproductive to look at, but the major thrust of the study was the Maishan pig. Those 99 pigs were divided equally both in number and by genetics. In other words, if there were three piglets from a litter, they were split into three groups. And those three groups were sent to the University of Illinois, Iowa State University, hey girl, and the USDA Meat Animal Research Center in Clay, Nebraska. For 25 years, the Maishan was studied. And it proved to be everything that people said it was. One, they're extremely docile. See my girl here. Two, they're extremely sedentary. And three, they have extremely large litters. One Maishan at the U.S. Mark facility had a litter of 28. They're also better mothers with a higher weaning to farrowing ratio than domestic pigs. And their piglets are rather unique in that they come out with a more developed digestive system, which very often can mean that they do not have the same issues with certain diseases as some domestic pigs. They're a great grazing pig. They have an extremely low environmental impact. If you look out over here on the pasture that we're on, this pasture currently has eight nation pigs on it. And you don't see the rooting and destruction that you will typically see with domestic hogs. So these three groups of pigs were sent out to University of Iowa, Sorry, Iowa State University, University of Illinois, and the USDA Meat Animal Research Center. And there they remained for 25 years, completely genetically isolated. No pigs were exchanged between the facilities. This created a very unique situation that was documented in 2014 in a special study done by a USDA geneticist by the name of Harvey Blackburn and several other geneticists. What they discovered was a, a situation known as genetic drift. That is when identical, genetical, genetically, uh, genetically identical pigs were kept in three different places, isolated for 25 years. They actually drifted from each other. So today the AMBA recognizes three distinct bloodlines within the Maishan pigs here in the United States. And they are named after the University of Illinois, Iowa State, and USDA. Hey girl. And there are differences, not only genetic but visual in those three bloodlines, and we'll go into that in a later video. 
Today, the effort to preserve this pig has become dedicated to identifying and establishing a good breeding database where we can keep track of the genetic diversity that is available and to make sure that breeders can, hey girl, can make intelligent decisions on how they breed their Mechons. They're a fantastic pig and from a standpoint of taste and as a livestock animal, they have incredibly uh, delicious meat. It is highly marbled, it is red, the grain of the meat is much finer than domestic pork. The Chinese have a real, uh, pork is the number one uh, meat consumed in China and they have very demanding standards when it comes to tenderness and taste. And the Meishan today offers a level of taste and tenderness that's not available in commercial pork. This is not your dad's white, new white meat. Meishans today are becoming more popular all the time because they're easy for people to raise. They're great pasture citizens. They don't knock me over when I come out with a bucket of feed. They're not aggressive to my other animals. They can be uh, jointly pastured with a number of different breeds. And like I said, they're extremely sedentary. This girl's only three years old. She sleeps most of the day. Uh, we're here in Tennessee at God's Blessing Farm, which is a farm that I'm co-proprietor of. And we've got Meishans throughout the property in different stages and from all three bloodlines. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. We look forward to giving you more information on the Meishan pig. And we invite you to visit our website. Uh, the American Meishan Breeders Association website is www.meishanbreeders.com. Have a great day and eat more bacon.